At some point in time, nothing had to come together to form something. That's how it had to be so the world around us would be the way it is. There had to be a product to emerge from the ceaseless entropy that engulfed the world before anything existed. Most ancient creation stories begin in this manner. There was nothing, and then there was something. One good example of something coming from near nothing is the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian story of creation. The phrase means, went on high, and is taken from the first line of the epic. The time in which it was written is unclear. Dates range from around the time of Hammurabi to the late second millennium BC. This epic details the events of the creation of the world and how the god Marduk became the ruler of the cosmos and how the city of Babylon came to be. In the beginning, there existed only two oceans, Apsu, the god and ocean of fresh water, and Tiamat, the goddess and ocean of salt water. Their waters mingled together and created the gods Lamu and Lahamu. These two then made Anshar and Kishar. From the latter pair then came Anu and Ea. Ea was a god of the earth and water. He was described as a cunning and resourceful deity. These new gods annoyed Apsu and Tiamat to no end, due to their constant treading of the water. By day, I cannot rest. By night, I cannot lie down in peace. But I will destroy their way. I will. They had longed for the peace and quiet that existed when it was just them two. Apsu proposed that they should kill the younger gods, but Tiamat couldn't allow her own children to be put to death. Despite receiving no help from her, Apsu decided he should continue with his plan. Ea found out about his intentions and killed him in an encounter. Apsu is laid waste. The loss of her consort deeply angered Tiamat. She created a horde of monsters and beasts meant to kill the other gods as revenge. Leader of this army was Kingu. Evil she wrought against the gods, her children. To avenge Apsu, Tiamat planned evil. Kingu carried with him the Tablet of Destinies, which gave him supreme authority over the cosmos. Ea and the other gods fled. Him and his consort Damkina created Marduk, a supreme and powerful god. The other gods sensed a war was coming and tried to stop it but none of them were brave enough to face her. Marduk was the only one willing to fight Tiamat and her army. In exchange, however, he wanted all the other gods to recognize his authority over them and become the ruler of the cosmos. When they accepted this, he rode towards Tiamat in his chariot and challenged her. She rose out of the waters, taking the form of a dragon. Marduk had with him the four winds that he commanded into her mouth, inflating her like a balloon. He used an arrow to pierce her heart, killing her. As Tiamat opened her mouth to its full extent, he drove in the evil wind. While as yet she had not shut her lips, the terrible winds filled her belly, and her courage was taken from her. Her mouth she opened wide. He seized the spear and burst her belly. He severed her inward parts. He pierced her heart. He overcame her and cut off her life. He cast down her body and stood upon it. When he had slain Tiamat, the leader, her might was broken, and her host was scattered. Her army cowered and surrendered. He killed them all and claimed the Tablet of Destinies for himself. Marduk used one half of her body to create the sky and heavens, and the other half to form the earth. Her saliva created rain clouds, and her eyes formed the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. He had the gods build the city of Babylon and created Lulu, the first man from the blood of Kingu. When Marduk heard the word of the gods, his heart prompted him and he devised a cunning plan. He opened his mouth and unto Ea, 
he spoke that which he had conceived in his heart, he imparted unto him. My blood will I take, and bone will I fashion, I will make man, that man may, I will create man who shall inhabit the earth. Lulu and his descendants dug canals to fertilize the land so they could forever prosper. This is perhaps one of the oldest creation myths of the world. We can draw some similarities with deities from other pantheons. Marduk plays a similar role as Zeus, or even Zeus's father Cronus, being the powerful god to rid the earth of evil. Tiamat is comparable to Gaia from Greek mythology because of her role of creating life. However, she also creates monsters at will and is the main force of evil throughout this creation story. We can gather that she is vengeful because of the death of her consort Apsu, and we can also gather that she is caring because of her unwillingness to assist her love in eliminating her children. She was also in the same situation as him, being kept awake from the treading waters of the other gods. She did not once mention this, which points to the fact that she is also tolerant. Absu lacks either of these traits. Now let's take a look at Marduk. Um, yeah, he's just a beast. Let the wise and the understanding consider them together. Let the father repeat them and teach them to his son. Let them be in the ears of the pastor and the shepherd. Let a man rejoice in Marduk, the lord of the gods.